All right, we're going to take a look at a, um, a police video and listen to some 911 calls. And, and the situation is this. It's a horrible situation. There is a, a double homicide and a third person is shot in an apartment complex. One of the neighbors makes a, the first 911 call. Then there's a second 911 call made by the suspect himself who has taken a 12-year-old boy hostage. The suspect's name is Jason Bourne. Let's take a look. Okay, tell me exactly what's happening. I don't know. I heard that, so I jumped out of bed and came next door, and now she's laying here. She can't breathe. I can hear choking on her blood. Okay, hold on. Is she outside or inside? She's in her doorway. She's in her doorway. There's blood is everywhere. She, okay. Is she bleeding? She, has she been shot? Yes, I'm assuming that she's been shot. I can't tell. Her head is bleeding. Is she talking to you? Someone else in there? Is she at the apartment? Is she at the apartment number that you just gave me? Yes, yeah, she's at 1301. I hear you. Somebody okay. else is inside, but I don't know if I should walk in. Okay, no, I want you to keep yourself safe. Hold on one second for me. I'm getting help started to you, okay? I, know, I hear you. She's screaming, help her. Okay. Do you see where the lady that's in the doorway? Are you with her yes. right now? Yes. Okay. I'm with can her. You, I'm sorry. I'm can you get a clean, dry cloth and apply that to where she's bleeding? She she's bleeding on her head. I don't have anything. Okay, can you get clean dry Can you get a towel off. or a shirt or anything a like towel that? Or a sheet or anything. Okay. Somebody's inside and she's screaming for help. There was okay. so many gunshots. Okay, did anyone see where the person went with the gunshot who was shooting? I'm not did anyone sure. No, somebody said. Okay. One of our neighbors said that he had a kid with him. The guy who was shooting? So there's someone in the doorway and then there's someone additional yelling for help inside? A Hispanic kid and an older black guy. My neighbor's seen it. Okay, so there's another female inside? Yes, I'm... Okay. All right, the lady in the doorway, are you able to find a cloth for her? Are you in here? You can't move? Were you shot too? Okay. Okay, I can't move anything. Should I move the bed and get her? She, okay. She's in it, the doorway. If we can, I want to try to get pressure on on where she's bleeding from. She said she want to get pressure on where she's bleeding from, but the woman in the... Oh my God, there's somebody else in here. Okay. There's somebody it's... else on the floor. Okay, are they bleeding? Yes, they're dead. I'm sure they're dead. Okay, are they breathing right now? The one woman, she's on the floor. There's three people in the building. There's three people in the phone in general. The one woman in the doorway is still breathing. I can hear her. It sounds like there's blood on her lungs. Okay. There is another woman shot and dead in there. There's another woman in here with her legs shot. Okay, so we have three victims total? Yeah, there's three victims total. Well, your first concern is always for the people who've been injured and whether or not they're still alive. So the, uh, when you arrive on a scene like that, you want to make your way in, disturbing as little as possible. Could you imagine what it was like for this woman to walk into this scene and start discovering dead bodies and people that were killed and how fearful she was of her own life, yet this dispatcher is calmly giving her instruction, being patient with her, and doing the things that she needed to do to make sure that the people that were shot got some type of first aid. But ascertain, number one, is the shooter still there or not? And number two, uh, is there anyone uh, that's still alive and breathing that's been, that's been injured? Uh, because you want to attend to them first and not be so concerned about, uh, you know, disrupting the crime scene. The, the threat to life and liberty is more important than preserving the crime scene. Every crime scene is going to be different, and the one thing that's consistent is when you're headed over to something like that, your adrenaline is spiking. And at the same time, you've got to remain uh, professional. You've got to rely on your training, and you've got to do all the things that are right during those critical initial t uh, seconds when you get there. Uh, Henderson 911, what's the address of your emergency? Hello? Hello. Hi, how Hello? can I help you? Hi, right, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How can I help you? This is Jason. I sometimes think my name is XM Satellite Radio, and I'm here with, we're doing a movie. It's, I want to introduce myself. I'm sorry. I am Gotham's Reckoning. 
Also known as Bang. So Bang. And Where are you, sir? Hello? Well, Bang, let me introduce my friend. Okay, you're on uh, the 911 line. His, Hello? His name is, you're, his name is, you're, you're on a 911 line. How can I help you? Yeah, I want a topper. A big you topper. Want, a what? Uh, I want a, a helicopter. What do they call it nowadays? A helicopter. A helicopter. He wants a helicopter, and he says he wants it now because he's scared. Who oh, Who are you? You're my neighbor, right? Oh, yeah, so uh, he's, my, he's my son, um, so I'm not going to hurt him. But I don't I don't think you guys are getting to the point where you're trying to play games and tap the line. I have a big... What kind of gun is this? Is it big? Okay. Oh, he says it's little, but on the side of it says 6 4 P226. 40 caliber Smith and Wesson. So I killed a guy named Jason Bourne, and I'm from the future. Like, uh, what's the name of the last face of the, of the avatar? Is it good? Did you like that? What's your address? What's your address, what's, sir? What's your address? This is really important. So just, hey, I'm not going to hurt you as long as you don't get your address wrong. If you get your address wrong, I have to kill you. Well, what we have is a very psychotic individual that you're not going to be able to discuss in a uh, you know, surrender in a rational way. Clearly, he's unstable. Uh, he has uh, some delusions about making a movie. And it's obvious that the dispatcher at first thinks he's a prank call. But then she finally realizes, you know, who, who he is and what he's doing. And what struck me is when I listened to it the second time, is you clearly hear him him say that he's going to kill that boy if the boy doesn't give the address. And we now know that assuming that, you know, he killed those other people, which I, I think he did, uh, he wouldn't hesitate in killing this 12 year old. So he was a, a very dangerous individual and he was likely to pull that trigger again and again and again. When you're dealing with mental patients, you got to play along with them. You, get, you got to get into their reality and, and, and do, play your role to try to, you know, save the life of the kid that's there on the scene. Yeah, I, right now, as we're speaking, throughout America, there's probably people like him calling dispatchers right now. They might not be dangerous, but they're calling them all the time. The scene is able for them to come up, and that black Escalade's parked on the east side of the apartments. It's got its uh, taillights on right now. Probably black Escalade is on east side of the 1387, we're trying to make contact with the Escalade. Keep the air clear. Central 1253, can you contact Starbucks and have them go on a lockdown? Affirm. Edward 11's got it. Central Sam 1387, this vehicle is going to be involved. It is going to be the suspect. I see a 12-year-old in the passenger seat. I see hands of the driver and the child. Keep the air clear. Copy. Central Lincoln 657, CP will be set up by building 16. CP building 16. This unit has top six. Control Sam 1387. The male has a gun. Copy, male has a gun. Control Sam 1387. This is going to be the suspect. We do see a 413. The child has his hands up. They're going to be in the front seat of the black Escalade. The Escalade is facing east. Just talk to him. See if he'll roll down the window. Just see if he'll roll down the window. Shots fired. Shots fired. Copy, shots fired. Yes. Not you. Is he pointing? Pendleton. Yeah. Okay. He's pointing it. Take the shot if you have it. Pendleton, do not hit that. In my personal opinion, I think that they were absolute right to pull that trigger. Uh, what you had here was a horrific uh, crime scene where they were still trying to evacuate victims out of that apartment, meanwhile, trying to protect the immediate area. I think that anybody in that situation could reasonably believe that he was gonna pull that trigger. And if a person is uh, in threat you know, of losing their life, then the officers have the obligation to try to protect them, and in this case, shoot them. Hindsight is always 2020, but but live action, uh, it's all about training, uh, you know, uh, your experiences, situations you've been in before, uh, how you reacted then, how you react now. Um, you know, you, you, you're trying to look at the, 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 the atmosphere, the things that are around you, uh, trying to figure out how you can be inconspicuous, how, where can I go to get a good shot, uh, how can I make sure this kid survives. 
Uh, who, who can I count on to, 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 to do what needs to be done to take care of business? With respect to how many people were shooting at that time, there was a problem. In this particular situation, if you look at from the time that those officers spot that car to the time that that shooting took place, we're talking about a very short period of time, really not enough time to even have a command post where a commander is going to tell people, you do this, you know, and you be the shooter. Usually the people on the perimeter are going to hold back. And here, there was probably uh, too many people shooting, but I did spot about four people that were in a position that could have taken them out, but that might have been a problem. They have to account for every bullet that was fired. They have to make every effort to locate the slugs from every bullet that was fired. Um, and it's a canvassing uh, circumstance. They, they retrieve the uh, spit cartridges. They count the bullets. They know the caliber of the weapons that were fired. So they more than likely already know if any of those bullets uh, make contact with the child. I think that we've got to remember that all these officers that were involved in the shooting are probably suffering right now because the child died. Very, very sad. Uh, they, they're probably going to be feeling guilty for the rest of their lives. But as a public, you know, we have to be un understanding that these guys and gals do the very best they can in these circumstances.